So, today's video is all about body fat, and we're going to be taking an in-depth look into which method of measuring body fat is the most accurate, because there's a number of different methods out there, and let's face it, most of them are pretty questionable and highly unreliable. So what I did, I set myself a task. I said, right, in one day, I'm going to try and get as many different readings as possible and compare all the results and answer the question that's been in my mind for a while now. So the first measurement which I took was around 11 o'clock in the morning and this was the bod pod. You get your height measured, you get your weight measured, and then you hop on into the egg looking thing. You close it, sit still, wait for about 30 seconds, hear a popping sound, and that's pretty much it. What it uses is an air displacement plethysmograph, which uses whole body densitometry to determine body composition. So it basically tries to calculate your fat and fat free mass. There was another system which I wanted to use where you submerge yourself underwater, but I couldn't find anywhere in London which would do that. This is called the hydrostatic measurement system. And instead of air displacement, it calculates your body fat based on the amount of water you displace and the density of your body. The second system which I used was called the DEXA scan. DEXA stands for Dual Energy X-ray Absorptometry, and it's traditionally used to determine bone density and assess osteoporosis risk, but it can also be very effective at looking at your body fat composition. The process was pretty simple. All I had to do was strip off, lie down, get my feet strapped up, and just make sure that throughout the whole scanning process, I didn't move, so I kept as still as possible. And the whole process took around three to four minutes. For the final readings, I went to Studio 234, and I needed a experienced personal trainer to do these readings. So I didn't want any old person just to do this. I needed someone who knew what they were doing. So we started off with the skin fold caliper readings. Then I got my man Jason to take the readings for me. He's an experienced personal trainer. and He's done hundreds of these measurements before. So I trust I knew what he was doing. We used the Durin and Wormsley foresight skin fold measurement as this tends to be one of the more popular ones. So the four sites were the biceps, the triceps, the subscapular, and the suprailiac. Now, in order to get the most accurate reading for the skin fold caliper measurement, I had to invest in a pretty pricey set of calipers. These ones right here, probably some of the best ones you can get on the market. They were not cheap, they were 200 pounds, but for the sake of this video, I thought it had to be done because the cheaper ones, which are often available, just don't really give you as good a result. We then moved on to the next form of measurement, which was a bioelectrical impedance analysis using the BodyStat 500. So this is the equipment, we've got some wires here, this machine, some pads. Now a bioelectrical impedance analysis is a measurement of opposing flow of a current at a particular frequency through any biological tissue. So the results are in. Does anyone want to have a guess as to what my body fat was? I'll just show you. This was near the end of the day. This is the current state of affairs in terms of my physique. Give you a little pose, a little bit of a flex. So let's have a look at my stats on the day the measurements were taking place. Height, 180 centimeters, age 27. Weight was fluctuating throughout the day between 97.2 and 97.6. There was a total of five readings which I did throughout the day. The first one, the bod pod. 17.8%, that's pretty high, okay? I must admit that was higher than I thought it would be. The DEXA scan, 15.4%. So that was more towards what I expected, to be honest, but one of the more surprising things which I found out from all the data which was provided was that I store a hell of a lot of body fat in my lower body, in my thighs, which kind of explains why, if we look at the next result, the skin fold caliper was 10.5%. 10.5% in my opinion was pretty low. I knew I was more than that. But why did it come up with such a low figure? Well, as you saw, the readings were only taken on my upper body. The next reading, the body stat 500, 17.4%. A little on the high side, in my opinion. And then the Omron BF 508, 17%. So there we go. They are all the readings and results which were taken on that day. It might be a bit surprising for a few people, but to be honest, I expect it to be around 13 to 15%. In order to decide which one is, or which ones are gonna be more accurate compared to the others, we need to look at the pros and cons of each. So, 
some of the pros of the DEXA scan are that it's widely renowned to be one of the most accurate methods of measuring body fat percentage. It's also the only method which measures every single part of your body rather than just taking readings from set places, it does a full body scan. And it's the only method that provides measurements of the progress and tracking of specific areas of the body. So it can tell you where you store your body fat and where you store your muscle mass. Some of the cons, obviously the cost. This wasn't cheap, this was the most expensive one. This cost me about 120 pounds and that was in a block booking. And also the availability, okay? These are only probably gonna be available in big cities. If we take a look at the bod pod, the pros are, it's you know generally known to be pretty damn accurate. Not as accurate as the DEXA scan, but more accurate than the calipers and the bioelectrical impedance devices. Uh, it's pretty easy to use, doesn't take much time and everyone can use it. The cons, the formulas are based on calculations which are prone to error from time to time. The availability isn't that great. Again, it's like the DEXA, probably only gonna be in built up popular areas. The cost, more expensive than the others. It did cost 40 pounds, so it was nowhere near as expensive as the DEXA scan. Now the problem with the bod pod is, I don't think the machine knows that I'm an absolute unit, okay? It can't tell the difference between whether it's fat that's taking up space or whether it's pure muscle, you know what I mean? So that's one of the bigger drawbacks. And the guy who took the measurements was a little bit surprised as well. So it tends to be more accurate for a typical normal person, but for those people who are bodybuilders or those who are severely obese, then it's not gonna be as accurate. Now the hydrostatic weighing, which is the underwater tank, was the one which I couldn't do because I couldn't find anywhere to do it. I believe that's because the DEXA scan's kind of taken over now as being more accurate and just simply more convenient. Obviously, there's a load of cons associated with this one. Similar to the bod pod, there is quite a bit of error based on the formulas and also down to just the accuracy of the test because when you do this, an individual has to be completely submerged underwater and they have to expel all of the air that's in their lungs. The skin fold measurements pros included the fact that it's obviously it's widely available. Um, most personal trainers, if they're a good personal trainer, should be able to do a skin fold caliper reading. Cons include the fact that the accuracy of the result is really dependent upon the person who does the reading and obviously the quality of the calipers. And as there's a number of different formulas which you can use, all of these formulas will give a different result, okay? They don't give you a universal body fat percentage. With the bioelectrical impedance, the pros obviously, again, similar with the skinfold caliper, it's pretty readily available, and you'll also get pretty much instantaneous results. Uh, the drawbacks, uh, there's quite a few of these, obviously it's widely known to be highly inaccurate and imprecise, especially if you get some cheap scales, they're gonna give you a pretty inaccurate result. It's also very sensitive to dietary and hydration variables, which can be hard to control, especially for women. You know, if it's that time of the month, it's going to give a different result. And as well, people who are not evenly distributed with respect to fat and muscle will experience additional inaccuracy with this method. So there we go, the pros and the cons. There are pros and cons with each. None of those methods are 100% accurate. None of them are. I guess you will never know exactly what your body fat percentage is. But that being said, the DEXA scan is going to be realistically the most accurate. So if you really want to know what your body fat percentage is, go and get one done. But that's if you can afford it and if there is one nearby. The next best bet, mm, probably going to be the bod pod. But again, availability. And I don't think it's necessarily going to be 100% accurate for people who are bodybuilders. And then you've got the skin fold caliper readings and the bioelectrical impedance, which in my opinion, they're really not that great. Okay, If you want an accurate reading, it's just not going to give you it. The problem with them is like a lot of my clients have experienced who have these scales at home, they'll measure themselves and say that there's a certain percentage of body fat and they go and measure themselves the next day and their body fat may have changed by 5%. Your body fat does not change by that amount in less than 24 hours. With the skin fold caliper readings, I really don't think they're gonna be that accurate at telling you exactly what your body fat percentage is. But again, they could be used to your advantage to see how your body composition is changing. So what I would do is Ideally, get as many different readings as possible and make a log of it at a set point in time. And then every four weeks, every six weeks, whatever that time period is gonna be, 
take the readings again, all, all the same places. And what you do, instead of trying to calculate your percentage, just see how those caliper readings are changing over time. So you'll see, or you should see if you're cutting, the skin fold reading should reduce and you'll be able to see where the body fat is coming off from. So you might notice that your arms are uh, getting leaner quicker than, say for example, your thigh. So there we go. Hopefully this has answered a few questions which you might have had on the topic. There are pros and cons with each method. It's just as simple as that, but there's definitely ones which are more accurate than others, okay? So some of the other ones which aren't so accurate, you just gotta take them with a pinch of salt. Don't take it for fact that that's what your body fat percentage is, okay? Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos. And like I said before, I'm gonna be going into full detail about my body composition in the next video. I'll put a link in the description. Obviously, it's not gonna be live now, but in a couple of days, it will be. Thanks for watching, see you in a bit.